The 2002 Indianapolis 500 might be the most controversial Indy 500 of all time. Although the controversy surrounds the finishing of the race, this was also one of the most important Indy 500s in terms of safety. This was the first race and racetrack in North America to have the safer barriers installed on the turns, as well as all pit crew members mandatory that they wear helmets when they go over the wall, as previously it was only the gas man that was required to wear a helmet. Similar to the previous year's running of the race in 2001, you had major kart teams entering the event. Chip Ganassi racing with Jeff Ward, Kenny Brack, and Bruno Giancara. Jeff Ward was actually a full-time entry in the IRL in 2002. Team Green with Michael Andretti, Dario Franchitti, and Paul Tracy. And Team Ray Hall would join them in 2002 with Jimmy Vassar behind the wheel. Robbie Gordon would also attempt double duty on this day as he would race the Indianapolis 500 and the NASCAR Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte. Most of the month of May was plagued by rainy and cold weather with some days of track time getting completely wiped out. But on race day it was warm and sunny and Bruno Giancara's target Chip Ganassi entry would lead the field to green with Robbie Buell and Raul Boisel alongside him on the front row. 11 rows of three. Pace car begins to advance the field. The acceleration should begin any moment. The front row well aligned. The second, third, fourth, fifth. They move into the fourth and final corner before the green flag. Jokera picks up the pace. to love the enthusiasm of Paul Page as he calls the beginning of this race, the man is absolutely legendary. 15 laps into the race, Bruno Giancara was pulling away from second place Robbie Buell, but that didn't stop Robbie Buell from doing his best to help clean up the environment as unfortunately he would smash this plastic bag and it would go right into his air outlet and get lodged inside there, but he would continue running on the track. The first 29 laps of the race would go caution free and just as the bleeders were about to make their green flag pit stops, Greg Ray would lose it in turn number one and back heavily into the outside wall, bringing out the first yellow flag of the day. There is a rule about that, but let's look at the accident here. Greg Ray to the middle of the turn, loses the back end of the car, and the back end impacts that new safer barrier that's been placed by the Indy Racing League on the outside of all four turns around this track. All the leaders would hit pit road under this yellow flag, but it would be a disastrous stop for Bruno Giancara as he would stall his car trying to leave his pit stall. The result of this would be Tony Kanaan winning the race off pit road. TK would not restart in the lead of the race though, as Thomas Schechter and Sam Hornish Jr. who were on pit road as the yellow came out completing their stops, managed to get off pit road without losing a lap and would cycle around to the front of the field as everyone else made their pit stops. Ready to come back to the green with Thomas Schechter in front of the field. The South African rookie leads Sam Hornish. And Tony Kanan, you see him jump out there. As he overhauls one of the slower cars from third. Scott Sharp is four. And Paul, the restart is a very dangerous time, probably the next stage say to the start of the race ends up happening the tires are cold from being changed and being put on the car the fuel is up to full 35 gallons of weight and what ends up happening you got a heavy car with cold tires you've got to make sure you pick up the pace gradually so you don't end up taking it to the wall 
as the race was approaching its quarter distance, things would get pretty interesting at the front when leader Thomas Schechter was trying to lap a slower car. We were just checking in the uh, Sam Hornish pit. On that pit stop, they added a little bit of front wing. Oh, oh yes, for Sam me. Hornish using a slower car gets alongside of Schechter. They go three wide coming off a of turn two. Schechter comes back to the front. Oh, that's a race of two guys in the 20-somethings, and they're not going to take their foot off the gas. Oh, look at this. Tony Kanaan took the advantage. Came inside of Hornet. Some fantastic racing at the front of the field, but Thomas Schechter was able to hold off Sam Hornish Jr. and the attack from Tony Kanaan. The field would once again make it to the end of their fuel window and all the leaders would hit pit road, but this time they were able to complete the stops without the yellow flag coming out and all the pit stops would cycle through. After everyone made their stop though, it wouldn't be Thomas Schechter holding the lead, he would fall to second as Tony Kanaan would cycle to the front of the field and lead the Indianapolis 5. On lap 78, Sam Hornish Jr. would get into the outside wall and would do damage to his suspension. He would hit pit road and the team would make repairs and he was able to continue on in the race and he would actually finish although several laps down. In a lap after this, the second caution of the race would come out for debris on the racetrack. All of the leaders would hit pit road for service and Tony Kanaan would maintain the lead of the race for the restart. There was a scary moment on pit road during this pit stop as Robbie Gordon was trying to leave his box but the fuel hose was still engaged with the car. When the hose came out it caused fuel to spill everywhere and there was actually an explosion that blew the top right off the tank that holds the fuel in his pit which is absolutely crazy to see. Thankfully no one was injured and Robbie Gordon was able to continue on in the race. Watch this scary moment. This is Robbie Gordon making a pit stop. And once again, we have a situation in which the fuel hose did not disengage correctly. And a result of that, there was a scary situation and the top of the fuel tank was apparently blown off or pulled off, but no apparent problem Watch the right side of your screen. We should be able to see the top of the fuel tank blow off as they, yeah, there it is, as they try to restart that car. Gary? Mark Wyda is in that pit. Mark, can you tell us what created that and how much damage and has anybody been hurt? We think, uh, we don't think anybody's hurt right now. I think everybody's okay. Uh, just the vent hose got stuck. It came halfway out, got stuck in the bodywork a little bit. It pulled the hose. Looked like the hose had a little fuel in it, it ignited and, went and actually brought it back up into the tank and then that's when the top blew off the tank. Everything's under control now? Well, except that we don't have any fuel, so we don't know exactly what we're trying to figure that out right now and see, we got fuel in the car. Uh, if we can't, any more fuel in the tank, we may be, we may be hosed. Okay, massive cleanup meanwhile on pit lane as we go to Jerry Punch. Robbie Gordon's team was able to secure fuel and they did finish all the laps in the race. Tony Kanaan and his teammate Felipe Giafoni would lead the field back to green as, as those two cars did not pit when the rest of the field did. Well, they're approaching turn number three and we're about to go racing once again here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the 86 running of the 500. Tony Kanaan will lead them down. Here's Paul. Average speed just before the yellow was 184 miles an hour for 80 laps. Shattering nine for Mantle's race record to the 80 lap mark. Tony Kanaan brings them back to the green flag. Already behind Tony, battled for positions. This is the time Paul, where a lot of drivers try to make up time on a start because all the cars are bunched together. And a very close run there for Ricky Treadway, just getting a little bit too close to traffic in front of him. Felipe Giafone, who has a first right there and Jimmy Vassar now he ran over a hose coming into the pit on his last stop and they said they were going to penalize him but I wouldn't slow down that early for a penalty and here's a second problem so Junkera in trouble and what's the problem with Vassar Junkera is going to go for the pit road and Sam Hornish comes back out of the pits after the work in the garage area. So suddenly three different occurrences. 
Well, Paul, it looked like Jimmy Vassar was dead stick, as we call it. Either he was out of fuel, electronics stopped, or he had no gearbox drive, so that car is stopped. Junqueira certainly ended up having a motor blow. You can see by the trail of smoke coming out here as we watch Jimmy Vassar come down pit lane, now looking for his pit box. And the yellow light comes out. We've got problems with one of the Hollywood cars. Oh, several cars involved. It looks like possibly Rick Treadway's car right over here. Went to go around traffic, got a little bit high, probably on the marbles, and ended up hitting the wall. Now, now the question is, uh, you mentioned Rick Treadway and the problem that he had in the close proximity that he was running to uh, Giafone, but this could be the leader. You can't tell the cars on the other side of the safety units. Could it be oil that maybe Giafone put out on the track? Well, we're not sure, Paul, but certainly you could have maybe knocked your wing with Rick Treadway. Now you can screen. see. The other car is Tony Kanaan. That was the race leader. He's slowing it out. That looks like a hard impact. You can see all the damage on the left-hand side. We talked earlier about the safer barrier, which usually helps a driver upon impact on the wall. Here he goes down to the center of the turn, a little bit high, a little bit high, probably cold tires and full fuel, and the back end got away from him, and he made impact with the wall Coming by the safer three. barrier. North into the track. So the that leader, Tony Kanaan, takes so himself the out on the 89th lap of running. Watch the impact there. What a crunch that is, and I can tell you from as a previous driver, there is nothing more disheartening know that the car is going to go around. You become a passenger just before you hit the wall. Well, there's a heck of a lot to unpack from this restart here. First, Jimmy Vassar would lose drive and coast around back to the pits. Then Bruno Giancaro would lose an engine going into turn number three, and he would dump a lot of fluid onto the racetrack, which then resulted in Tony Kanaan, who was a leader of the race, coming back around to that exact spot the next time by, getting into the fluid and looping the car hard into the outside wall, just missing the safer barrier, and putting an end at his bid for an Indy 500 win. And as all that was happening, Sam Hornish Jr. would return to the racetrack after making repairs. With everything that happened here, this would hand the lead back to Thomas Schechter for the restart. Schechter picks up the pace right where he's supposed to. Watches for the green. That's what he wants to do, Paul. A nice clean start and get some air between him and the lap traffic. You see Gilles de Ferrin now making the move. Here comes Gilles de Ferrin. He moves around Unser Jr. Paul Tracy also moving back there. Oh, Tracy almost gets trapped to the wall by Redon. Now Tracy moves on the outside of Loren Redon. Paul Tracy's always been brave. Never one to take Wait a minute. No, that's Frank Keeney. That's Frank Keeney. That's Frank Keeney. So we're looking at a guy that's actually down in the field. This restart would kick off the longest green flag run of the entire race for a total of 74 laps, where the field would have to make not one, but two green flag pit stops. And when both of them cycled through, Thomas Schechter would resume the lead. And it looked like he fully had this race in control. With approaching 25 laps to go, a healthy 8 second lead over Paul Tracy, and only 13 cars remaining on the lead lap, it was looking more and more clear that Thomas Schechter just had to bring this thing home in one piece and the victory would be his. But as we all know, things can change in an instant. Yellow comes out, we've got a car into the wall. Uh, your leader, it's the leader Schechter. again! Thomas Schechter into the wall. Tony Kanaan is the leader, crash, and now it's Schechter. Paul Tracy will pick up the lead under yellow. As we can see, hitting the outside wall into that safer barrier, he was already high, way off the groove on the racetrack when we came into view. You can see there he goes and makes hard right side compound.
for the second time in this race the leader ends up getting in an accident on the previous pit stop thomas Schechter took scuffed tires on the front of his car and soon as he left the pits he started to struggle with some understeer and unfortunately in the dirty wake of some lap cars he got too high and it put him right into the wall in turn number four and put an end to his day when he was so close to victory Schechter ended up leading a total of 85 laps throughout the day. Most of the leaders would hit pit road to take advantage of this yellow to be good to go to the end, but Elio Castroneves would stay out and try to gamble on fuel and he would take over the lead of the race. But unfortunately for his teammate Gilles Deferrin, he would run into some trouble on the exit of pit road and would actually end up losing a wheel as it was not properly secured. This would put him out of contention. The restart was delayed by one lap due to a fan throwing a beer can onto the racetrack, but Elio Castroneves, looking for back-to-back -back wins in the Indianapolis 500, would lead the field back to green. Lap 180 has gone by, and 24 times the leader at 180 did not win the Indianapolis 500. Seven of the last 10 years that's been true. Elio Castroneves is 22 laps from his last pit stop. Alex Barron is 15. And Paul, you start to put those numbers together, and those first two guys are going to really push the field on the Not sure how it's going to play out. They must be betting on another yellow. They head for the line. Catherine Nevis is the leader. Frank Heaney is just getting back on the lead lap. The last thing Catherine Nevis needs to do is race with Frank Elio Castroneves has a nice advantage on the restart as there's quite a few lap cars in between him and Alex Barron who is on the same strategy as him as well but he was immediately passed by Felipe Giafone and Paul Tracy is also lurking in the distance. It was also very smart of Elio to let Dario Franchitti in front of him because Elio had to stretch fuel to make this work. Well, pretty much all the guys that were trying to run him down, with the exception of Alex Barron, who started to fall through the field quite quickly anyways, were good to go to the end. With Elio desperately trying to save fuel, with four laps to go, his lead was all but erased, and Felipe Giafone was trying to make a move going into turn number three. Paul, we got something brilliant here, Castro. Here Rebus. comes Giafone! See, Tracy's Tracy getting up now right making the move. Tracy gets around to your phony. Tracy now second. Keep it in there. Castro Nevis just ahead. Franchitti gives him both room. That was the radio contact from Barry Green saying, get to the left, get out of the way. They got a team car that might have an opportunity to win the Indy 500. On to the front stretch in Indianapolis. Tracy. Flag next time. That's it. Leaders were told to use full rich if he has to. He just said that's the guy. And in the Penske pit ball, they are sweating bullets, literally. They know the white flag's up next time die as Tracy stops and closes. Tracy looks to the outside. Oh, and a guard dribble right down again. Yellow flag are going to come out together. Paul, oh, that is the race right there. He ran just a spurt of fuel, and Paul Tracy's going to get it. Scoring goes back to the previous lap. Unbelievable, but. But he does have to finish. Gonna that say, Paul, gonna that's get the key. He's got to get around even under yellow, and there's still concern. Any falter at all. He's done it. Elio Petronevich played the economy game and wins the 86 Indianapolis 500. So 
Elio Castroneves ends up scoring the win. However, not without some controversy, as Paul Tracy was making the move to pass him on the outside of turn number three. That's the moment when the caution came out. The IndyCar ruling at the time said when the yellow came out, Elio was still in front of Paul Tracy, therefore giving him the win. But there are many, many people out there that disagree and will tell you that Paul Tracy won the 2002 Indianapolis 500. As he did get back to the start finish line first after all, he did cross it before Elio. And because Elio was so close on fuel, he literally just went around the track at a turtle's pace, trying not to run out of gas to make it around to claim the victory. As there is no rules that he had to maintain pace with the pace car, because obviously there was no pace car out on the track. So Elio ended up getting credit with this victory. Paul Tracy and Team Green immediately filed a protest after the race, stating that they won the race as they thought the green was still out. Well, Castro Neves saw the yellow light on his dash come up so he immediately let off. At this time, the IRL was kind of an early adapter of going back to the previous scoring loop when a caution came out, as NASCAR at this time still raced back to the yellow flag. And that's how Elio Castro Neves was determined the winner. The evidence that the Indy Racing League and Brian Barnhart used to justify that was at the last scoring antenna, entrance of turn number three, which was the last one they crossed before the caution, the margin was 0.0371 seconds of, with Castro Neves in front. And they used that in conjunction with the time of the accident of Radon and Lazier in turn two. They also used the time that Brian Barnhart also made the official radio call for the caution and the time that the dashboard caution light was activated on the cars. With this evidence, Barnhart rejected Team Green's protest. But a written appeal of the protest decision was made on June 3rd, and the hearing was scheduled for June 17th. The appeal did not go in the favor of Team Green, as on July 2nd, 2002, Tony George issued an 18-page decision on the appeal, which upheld the victory for Elio Castroneves, and it created quite a stir in the aftermath. As many believe that Paul Tracy should have won this race among fans and media and also many believe that Team Green was never going to win this appeal because at this time in 2002 Team Penske was already a full time IRL entry while well, Team Green was a kart team and they did not want a kart team coming in and winning the race for the third consecutive year. The broadcast did their best to try to show video evidence of Elio winning the race but the footage was inconclusive. Well, you know that Team Green, Paul Tracy, they have filed a protest regarding their position in the final standings. Now, at the top of your screen is the crash involving Laurent Redon, and we have synchronized our tape machines to the exact second. So Redon was crashing into the wall, Scott Goodyear, and at that point, Paul Tracy was running behind Elio Castro Neves. Bob, you can certainly s clearly see that. And the other thing I'd like to point out on it, even though that Tracy thinks that he was ahead of him before the crash happened, the finish at the Indianapolis 500 is unprotestable, as I learned back in 1995. But we can clearly see here that Elio Castro Nevis is in the lead. Now here is in slow motion the pass that, Ca uh, that uh, Tracy pulled on Castro Nevis at the end of the backstretch, going into turn number three. And you will see as the cars come around the third turn, we will spot shadow and show you that the yellow light is on. There's the yellow light right there. And Bob, that is certainly a violation of the rules and Helio Castroneves certainly did win this race today. Now this is where I throw it to you guys. Did Elio Castro Neves deservingly win this race? Or was Paul Tracy robbed of it? Let me know in the comments. I love to hear what you think on this one. As it's definitely an uh, interesting and controversial topic. That'll wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you're into IndyCar history, make sure you hit that subscribe button where we upload motorsports history videos every Tuesday. And if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate the feedback. That's all for now. Take care, everyone.